Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Hello there, hello, hello. Okay, lesson three, making scale drawings using the parallel method. So it says opening exercise, Danny dilated a, a triangle ABC from center O. So here's triangle ABC, resulting in triangle A prime B prime C prime. She says that she completed the drawing using parallel lines. How could she have done this? Explain. So what I'm going to do is take this, okay? And it in, the, in this program here, they call it a geodraic, geodraic. It is also a square. So if I put, I want to draw a line parallel to OB. Then I put this tool right on there and I rotate it so it's sitting right on line OB. I take my ruler. So if you were to do this on paper, you would rotate this like so. And you'd put that right here up against your square like so. And then holding down your ruler with your finger so it doesn't move, you would then take this and slide it up like so. So then if I went up to say here and then drew a line segment along this edge, oops, let's try over here, along this edge, then it would be parallel to O, B. Let me get rid of this line. Okay, so this line here is parallel to OB. And then you would continue by drawing parallel lines. And this is what this lesson is going to talk about, using parallel line method to make scale drawings. Okay, so I decided to wait and explain how to do this by using the examples instead of doing it in the opening exercise. Uh, so here's example one. It says use a ruler and a set square to draw a line through C parallel to AB. So what you want to do is take your ruler and your set square and you take your set square and you set it so that, let me try to get this just right, rotate it. If I put it this way, I think 135 is square, not quite. This looks about square here. So what you do is you put your set square on the line like so, so that it lines up with C. Take your ruler, bring it over and rest it up against there and then slide, aye, 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 and then slide your set square up to C. Okay, and then make a mark. So it'd be right here and then continue it. So then you would have to move the set square out of the way, rotate your ruler, bring it up to that segment you created and extend it so that it goes through C. And now you have a line parallel to AB going through point C. And then it says, what ensures that the line drawn is parallel? Okay, well, since the set square is in the shape of a tri right triangle, we are certain that the legs of the set square are perpendicular. Then when one leg is aligned with line segment AB, and the other leg is flush against the ruler and can slide along the ruler, the 90 degree angle between the horizontal leg and the ruler remains fixed. In effect, there are corresponding angles that are equal in measure, thus being 90 degrees actually, and therefore the two lines must be parallel. Okay. Okay, page two brings us to this diagram here, which is part B that says to use a ruler and a set square to draw a parallelogram ABCD around segment AB and point C. 
So instead of repeating what I just did in part A, I drew this parallel line to AB. So I would use the set square, set up my ruler, slide the set square up, draw my line. So that's what's been done so far. Now that's step one. And then step two, we are going to take our compass and we're going to put the, okay. So I'm gonna have to rotate it this way a little bit. Actually, let me open it first, like so. Then I won't have to adjust its width because it's off screen. So if I put the compass stylus or point right on C, what I want to do is make an arc that is length AB. So actually what I should be doing first is putting this at A, opening this up to B moving this over here to C and drawing an arc. Okay, so now that that's done, we have a side, a point, a parallel line, and another point. And that's all we need. So then I just put a dot here. And I call that D. So I'll put a D right there. And then we just take our ruler and draw segment AC, which is side AC of our parallelogram. And do the same with B through D. Like so. So then if I just take my eraser and erase back to there, take my eraser and erase back to there, there is a parallelogram, A, B, C, and I erased D. Okay, so when constructing, here's what it's gonna end up. Um, I am really having a problem with the way they labeled this. Notice what it's called, parallelogram A, B, C, D. And when naming a parallelogram, you should be able to put your pencil down on the starting letter A, go to B, which is okay, but then it says C. So now I have to go over to C and then it says D. So obviously that is a backwards Z. It is not a parallelogram. So the name of this is really not a good name. Either I need to come up here and say, let's call it A, B, D, C, or I would call this point D and label this point C. So I can go around either clockwise or counterclockwise in alphabetical order to draw that. Anyhow, example two, use the figure below with the center O and a scale factor of R equals two. In other words, we're, this is our pre-image we're going to make an image that is twice the size of it. So it's going to be further away from O than this one is. So I need to extend rays out beyond C, B, and A. So that's the first thing we're going to do. It says draw a ray beginning at zero, or O I mean, through each vertex of the figure. So I'm going to choose a ray. I'll make them blue. And I start at O going through C. I want to make those thinner though. Let me just choose that and let's make it a little bit thinner. Properties and let's go that thin. Okay, so there's Ray OC and I will continue doing that Ray and let's make it thin before I start. And now I'm going to do a Ray O A and a Ray O B like so. Now I just need to fix this a little bit. All right, that's better. Okay, so there's our three rays. All right, so that's step one, check. Step two, select one vertex of the scale drawing to locate. We have selected A prime. Locate A prime on OA so that OA prime is two times OA. So what I'm going to do is take my ruler. Actually, I'm not going to use a ruler. I'm going to use my compass instead. And since it's an even number one, if it's one times or two times or three times, 
we can just use a compass rather than a ruler. So here's what we are going to do. But if it was 1.5 or something like that, then you wouldn't want to use a compass. And I'll explain that in a moment. So if I put my stylus on A or O and open it up to A, that would is a distance that we have. If I repeat that distance, that is now two times OA and A prime will be right here. So if this were length five, OA prime would be length 10 because A to A prime is the same as O to A, we doubled it and that's two times. So I did that, select the vertex of the scale. We have selected A prime and we did that. So check. Align the set square and ruler as in image below. One leg of the set square should line up beside AB. So now I get my set square. Lining it up with AB. Align the set square ruler as in the image below. One leg of the set square should line up with side A, B. So that's what, so what they mean is rotate this like so. Line it up with A, B. So if I put this down right here, I wanna rotate it just a little. Right there. So I lined it up with AB and perpendicular leg should be flush against the ruler. Okay. Okay, so they weren't showing the image so I had to go find it. So now it's not in the right place. So what we're going to do is we're going to line it up with AB like we did, but we want the ruler lined up so that we're like at the midpoint of AB. So we're going to line up our square with our ruler and AB like so. So this might be a little difficult to see in a video, especially if you're watching it on a phone. All right, let me just tweak this one degree. Right there. Okay, so if it, it's hard to see, but I have this side lined up with AB, and I have this side lined up with the ruler, and that's what they asked us to do. All right, so step four, slide the set square along the ruler until the edge of the set square passes through A prime. So now I'm going to take the set square I'm going to slide it straight down until it passes through that point A prime that we just created, which is right there. Then along the perpendicular leg of the set square, draw the segment through A that is parallel to AB. So I want to draw a segment parallel to AB and AB is here. So they mean to use this side of the set square and draw a line parallel through A prime. until it intersects with the ray OB, okay, which is right here. So I didn't have to go way over here, but I did have to cross OB. Here is ray OB right here, and I did cross it, so we're okay, and label that point B prime. So now I'm going to move this, and I'm going to put a point where they intersected, which is right here. Let me use screen still, right here. And that is going to be B prime. Okay, so that is step 
three, and four. Step five, continue to create a parallel segment to determine each successive vertex point. In this particular case, the set square has been aligned with AC. This is done because in trying to create a parallel segment from BC, the parallel segment was not reaching B prime. So let me explain that. Okay, so we're going to take this square, we're going to rotate it so that we are right on AC like this. Okay, we are lined up with AC right along this edge here. We're going to take our ruler, rotate it. Oh. And put it right on our square. So our square is lined up with our ruler and it's lined up with CA on this side. We're then going to slide our square up until we get to B prime or A prime, I mean, because we're copying AC, so now we want to go A prime. So if I line this up, like that, and then draw a segment through A up until we intersect the blue OC, Okay, so this says here, continue to create parallel segments to determine each successive vertex point. In the, par in the particular case, the set square has been aligned with AC. Okay, so we set squares aligned with AC. This is done because in trying to create a parallel segment from BC, this one, the parallel segment was not reaching B prime. Okay, so we couldn't get over to B prime using that segment, so we had to use AC. This could be remedied with larger set square and longer ruler, but it's easier to avoid working on a segment parallel to AC instead. So a larger square, big longer ruler, and we would have been okay, but that's fine. So now we have this third point and it is right here crossing our ray OC and this is parallel to AC and that is going to be called C prime. And then finally, we would take our ruler and create our, finish our drawing by drawing a segment B prime C prime. Swing this around, bring my ruler up like so. Let's use green again. And I'm gonna start at C prime and go down to B prime. Move that out of the way. And then if I were to erase my segments so that they only went to the points like that, and like this, and like this, and get rid of this, then we finally have a triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime. That is twice the size of ABC. Okay, and page three brings us to the exercises. So pause the video, see if we can do these, and we'll take a look. All righty, so assuming you've done this, here's number one. It says to take a ruler, a ruler, and a set square, and a set square. Use the parallel method to create a scale drawing of quadrilateral W, X, Y, Z. By the parallel method, W prime has been already located for you. It is right here. Determine the scale factor of the scale drawing. Verify that the resulting figure is in fact a scale drawing by showing that corresponding side lengths are in constant proportion and that corresponding angles are equal in measure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and draw our rays. So I'll put this right here at O. Rotate it. They've already put W there for us. So that will tell us what the scale is. 
So if I draw an array now, let me just do it this way since I'm using the ruler. So if I draw a line through W and W prime like so, and then if I rotate it over to X, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to extend O X out beyond and then rotate it over to Z. And I'm going to draw O Z and continuing. And then I'm going to rotate it over to Y and draw O Y continuing up. So there are our rays that we need to draw our scale. <clears throat> okay, so W prime is right here. So what I need to do is measure from O to W and then from O to W prime. So let me put my ruler back there and put it back here. So when I look at this and I measure, W is at, it looks like 2.6. So O W equals 2.6 centimeters. O W prime is, let me see, W prime is 7123, 7.3 centimeters. Okay. So then I take my calculator, since they're such strange values, or not strange, but odd values, and I'm going to take 7.3, and now that we're scaling up, okay, the, this is the pre-image, our image is out beyond it, not closer to O, but out on the other side, that means it's a scale up greater than one, so that means the bigger number has to be on top, so it's going to be 7.3 divided by 2.6. And that will give us our scale factor of approximately 2.8, which is 73 over 26. Obviously, because we're going back to this, but if I did 2.8, so just for an approximation, and hit, that'd be 14 fifths, almost three times. So let's just say it is three times. They're just off by one fifth. So it looks like it's a three to one, or a one to three, I should say, I guess. Our original is one and our final is three. So there is our R. Okay, now I need to do the same with all the others. So X is, it looks like 16 or 17. Just move this out of the way. So I'm going to list all of these. OX equals 1.7 centimeters. So if I take 1.7, so if I just multiply 14 fifths by 1.7, then I get 4.76, 4.7, 4.8. So here's 4.567. So somewhere around seven or eight, which is here. And I will label that A prime. Okay, continuing with that, I'm going to rotate to Z. And Z looks like 2.9. Okay. What did I say here? 4.76. So OX prime equals 4.76 centimeters. Okay, and then let's change to green. O Z equals 2.9 centimeters. So O Z prime is going to be 14 fifths times that 2.9. And that will give me 8.12. So O Z prime should equal 8. 0.12 or approximately 8.1 will be close enough. So I'm going to go out to eight and then a little bit more right there. Move this, put a dot right there and call that Z prime. And then one more time. Measure out to Y 
and it's 1.56. It looks like 1.65. So let me say OY equals 1.6, 1.65, somewhere around there. So then I take 1.6 times that 14 fifths, which is our R, or it's three times basically, but 4.48, 4.5, let's just say, and put it right here. Okay, and that would go there, and that is Y prime. So O Y prime equals four point, what did I say it was? Five centimeters. Okay. So it also said here that verify the resulting figure is a scale drawing by showing corresponding side lengths are in constant proportion. Well, that's how we had to create it. So just doing that shows that they're in constant proportion. So these are all of our side lengths. So now I just need to draw. So let me just use a straight segment instead of my ruler. And I will draw a segment from A to W prime. Okay, and you gotta be really accurate here because we got to measure the angles after. It's difficult with the program. Alrighty, and then choose my segment, blue Z to W. Okay. And then a segment from Z prime to Y prime, and then finally back to O. Oh, I don't want to draw to O. My mistake. I'll delete this, and Y has to go over to A. Okay, so there is our scaled up drawing of three to one. Okay. Um, it said to use this set square and I didn't, but if I were to have used the set square instead of measuring like we did, then what I would have done, so I probably should have done this, but you set your, actually you want it this way. To do it with a square, Let's see, you wanna rotate it so that one flat side of the square is on a Y. That was our given side. We then want to rotate our ruler, line it up, it'd be much easier on paper than with this, because these don't, you can overlap these and that's not what we're trying to do. So once we put this here, then you would slide, not change it, slide it up and put it there. And you should have the same angle measure as here. Slide it up. And as you can see, if I did it that way, my Y would have been more over here. And yeah, so that's how you would do it with the square and then draw your lines. Okay, so if I took my compass now or my protractor and put it on A, this is the verification part. Then I need to Bring this around and there's a W right there. A W is 73 degrees. Move this up to a prime and it should be the same angle measure. I'm off by a little bit, but that's how you do it. This is very difficult to do with a program. Um, on paper, it would have been much easier. 
Okay, so I'll bring in the answers that you should have gotten because when I put this in my smart notebook, it also changes the size of it. So the angle shouldn't change, but the lengths might. So let me show you what the answer should say. Why is that doing that? Okay, so it says the scale factor is three, which I had 14 over 15, but 15 over 15 is pretty close. Verification of the enlarged figure should show that the length of each segment is a scale drawing and three times the length of each segment in the original figure Example, W prime X prime equals three times W X. The angle measurements are, the measure of W is 132 degrees, the measure of angle X was 76, the measure of Y was 61, and the measure of angle C was 91 degrees. Okay, number two, with a ruler and a set square, I'll do it with the ruler and set square this time. That's for verification. Ruler and set square. I'm going to first, what does it say to do? Create a drawing, scale drawing of DEFG about center O with the scale factor of R equals one half. One half is less than one, so it's going to be smaller. It's gonna be half the size and it's gonna be in this area here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just simply draw my rays through O, from O, I should say. I don't have to go beyond O because it's not going to be over here from O and to each vertex. So when I do that, let me use green this time. There's my first ray, rotate it through D, draw O, D and beyond. And it's really not necessary to go beyond because this is half the size. So D prime is gonna be down here somewhere. Okay, and then finally O, F. And one more OG. Okay, so there are our rays. So in using a square, if I do, let's say DG first, then notice this is the right angle here. So I'm going to put my square as closely as possible on DG like that bring my ruler up. And I don't like doing this with the electronics simply because these don't uh, stop. They don't hit up against and stop. I, there's no way to tell if they're overlapping or not and they don't. So this doesn't even work in the program. But in real life, you would put your ruler up against this square and then slide the square down because you can't go over. But if I grab this square and move it, I, I move it beyond and in real life it would slide down like this and never overlap the it would never overlap okay the ruler and stay up against the ruler but before I do that I need to find one point so where is a half so I need to measure from O to G and then find the halfway point. So let me do that. So OG is 6.8. So I'll write that over here. Okay. OG equals 6.8 centimeters. It's going to be different on yours because I scaled when it, it scales a different size when I put it in this new program. So that looks like 68 millimeters or 6.8 centimeters. Half of that, therefore, OG prime would be 3.4 cm. And 3.4 is right here. So then I would take my ruler and put it up against my square
And like I said, this is very difficult with this program. Okay, so in doing that, then I put that up against there. And in reality, then I would take and slide this down until I got to that blue dot. And then I would draw a segment right there. Okay. That would find us two points then. We know where G, this is G prime. And on this line here, we were doing G D, so D would be, D prime would be right here. So there's G, there's D prime, G prime. So two of them are done already. So all we would have to do is do two more. So then I would take my ruler, measure O F, And OF is, it looks like 79, 78. So OF equals 78 centimeters or 7.8 centimeters. OF prime is therefore going to be half of that, which is 33.9 cm. So I come down here on this ray and find 3.9, which is right here, right there. And that is going to be my F prime. Then I bring my protractor or square, I mean, line it up with EF like so, and then line up your ruler to make a 90 degree angle with EF and the ruler. like so. And then of course, I'm just pretending slide it down until I get to F right there. And I want to go to from F prime, which is here over to this side here. It did not recognize the square. There we go right there. Okay, so this is E prime. And then I can connect and finish. So D to E is here and G prime to F prime is there. All right, so now I have the scaled down half. I'm not gonna take the time to do it now, but what you would do then is measure this angle with a protractor, measure this angle and see that they are congruent. I will just bring in the answers. and survey says verification of the reduced figure should show that the length of each segment in the scale drawing is one half the length of each segment in the original figure. For example, D prime E prime equals one half D E. The angle measurements are angle D should be 85 degrees, angle E should be 99, angle F should be 97, and the measure of angle G should be 79. Okay, page four brings us to exercise three. So hopefully you've tried this. So it says with a ruler and a set square, use the parallel method to create a scale drawing of pentagon P, Q, R, S, T. About center, oh, notice that is inside the pentagon and it's a scale factor of five halves. So when R equals five halves and five halves is greater than one, we're going to get a bigger pentagon out here, okay? And I don't like where they put this, so let me work my magic here. And I'm gonna move this, copy, unlock and paste. I'm gonna move it down here and notice how it changed the size of it, so maybe I won't do that. All right, let's just leave it as is. So let me read this and then I'll cover this. How's that? Verify the results in the figure. In fact, R is in fact a scale drawing, but showing corresponding side lengths are in constant proportion 
and that corresponding angles are equal and measured. So it's going to be outside. We're going to go up two and a half, out two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. So let me just cover up the question now because we're going to be overlapping it. So let me hide this. Now that we know what to do, R is five halves, create a scale drawing. Okay. So here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do, and they want us to use the square. So you put your ruler at O and rotate it so that it goes through S and we're going to draw our rays. So S prime is gonna be out here somewhere. Rotate to T. So step one is just draw all of your rays. There's, there's OT. OP will go this way, and OQ would go down here. And finally, OR would go this way. Okay, so there is the five rays that we need to create this. I do need to measure one distance. And if you measure further distance than closer, uh, it's more accurate. So let me put, uh, let me put the ruler back. Um, actually, no, I want, I want the ruler centered at O, right there. And I will measure, it looks like OP or OQ are the furthest away. So let's just do OQ. So I'll put my ruler here. So O is at zero. Q looks like 1.567. Q is 1.7. So OQ equals 1.7 centimeters. So if I multiply that by five and divide it by two, that's our new location. So five halves times 1.7 equals four and a quarter. So O Q prime is gonna be length 4.25 CM. So I go out to four, one, two and a half is right there, okay? All right, so now move the ruler out of the way. This point here is Q prime. Q prime right there. So how are we going to do this? Well, if I want to draw P first, I'm going to rotate my square like so and line it up with side PQ like this. So put your square lined up with the side PQ then you'd bring your ruler over. Let me do it this way, it's easier. Just trying to line it up first because, and then rotate it so it's parallel to my square side, like so. And then you slide the square down until you get to Q. Put it up against your ruler and draw a segment from here to here. And where that touched is P prime. Okay, now I can skip this side and do RS. So now I'm going to line up my square with RS. Bringing the ruler over, make it parallel to the other side of my square. Right about there. Going through P though, so now I wanna move this over like so, up against Hmm. right there. So see how this goes here and this is perpendicular here. 
um, here's P, here's R, here's S. So I want to draw a segment over like so. And this would be R prime. Okay. Continuing that. Now, if I put my ruler back here, actually, I won't be able to do that. So this is parallel. If I put my protra or my square back like this and slide it over to here now, then I can draw a parallel line to RS over here to S prime. And then finally, all we have to do is SR. So if I rotate this parallel to SR, like so, Put my ruler here, slide the square out to here. And then draw a line segment down until it hits there. Obviously, I can do this with my program. You can't do it with. Okay, actually, that's not going to be right, is it? Because then if QR is parallel to QR has to be over here somewhere. So if I line this up here, let me show you what I mean. I lined up Q like so. Rotate my ruler like this. Slide my square down to Q like this and drew a segment. Here. Then QR is parallel. So R should be here. This should be my R. This is out too far. These, okay, I see what's wrong. This one here is not parallel to this. This is parallel to this. This is parallel to this. So I'm going to delete this. So you'll run into these things sometimes and just need to fix them. So uh, now I let me go back and do our uh, PR. So I want this side over like this, lined up with PR. Again, this would be much easier on paper. So if you're doing this at home with the actual square and ruler, you would have been done long ago and probably more accurately. So then I bring my square up to here and draw, whoops, a segment from here. It would intersect here, not up here. Okay. So this has to get moved. My pen just went crazy on me. Let me just delete that. And now I need to draw a segment from
here to here. Oops. Okay, now it's not recognizing my ruler. There we go. Okay. So anyhow, Hmm. Okay, this did not work out, but anyhow, this is how you would do it. It's a little bit difficult on my computer program, so if you just follow the steps, yours probably worked a lot better than mine. So I'm just going to stop right here. And page five brings us to the end of lesson three. Go to your problem set.